Hello guys and welcome to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make procedural tiles in Blender. They're very easy, very beginner friendly and despite the complex look of this if you're new to notes, it's actually very simple. I'm going to go for each one of these and how to set it all up so it's not complicated. And you can see this is the final result. It's very controllable, you know, you can easily change the scale, you can change kind of like the strength of the bump and things like that. Um, very simple little introduction to making tiles and I think you guys will find this procedural workflow very fun and if you want to use the shader ball here or this kind of simple setup I have here for if you want to follow along that way you don't have to but I am going to put a link in the description to where I did another tutorial on my channel it's completely free where I quickly go through how to set up this little shader ball thing here um, but by all means just use whatever scene you're currently working on so without wasting any more time let's make this fun little procedural shader So when I'm making my material, I'm going to be using this shader ball here of some basic lights and a camera. And if you want to see how I made this shader ball setup, I'm going to put a link in the description where you can go check it out. It's really easy and quick to do. Um, other than that, if you just have a normal scene you want to work in, that's fine. This is something that I'm going to work with. Once again, link in the description below to that tutorial. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we are in our shading workspace. And obviously, um, I'm in Cycles, that's what we're working with here. So make sure you're in the Cycles engine. And, you know, have some lights, an object you want to work with. So I'm just going to go into the rendered view here, right? So you can see, I just have a blank object, could be anything. So I'm just going to click New to create a new material. And let's call that material Tile. Okay, or Tiles. So now we've got a material. Now by default, we have this principled BSDF shader. So let's just... Um, bring this um, workspace up a little bit so we have some more space. Now what we're going to be using to create our tiles or generate a tiles texture is what we call the brick texture. So if you hit shift A and you go over to your search bar you can type in brick, okay sorry brick, and you can click on brick texture. There you can see we have the brick texture. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, why would I want to use a brick texture for tiles? And essentially it's just the name of the texture here but the brick kind of the principle behind a brick, like the um, having some blocky things with specific dimensions and having some sort of fill or mortar in between that. It's the same kind of principle. So you can use a brick texture to make a tile texture or anything like that. So with this brick texture here, we're gonna just place it next to our principal shader. And we're gonna actually take the color input and plug it into the base color of our principal shader. And now over here you can see you know, if we hit Z and make sure you're in rendered mode, you can see that it is making these kind of like brick brick patterns. Now, one thing we can do to make it look more like tiles, which I get into a little while, is messing around with the, the width here, right? And also the mortar size and things like that. But at the moment, um, because I am applying this to a round object, I'm gonna go Shift A, I'm gonna search, I'm just gonna get a texture coordinate. So I'm gonna type in texture, coordinate and just click on texture coordinate. Now if you're just making a texture on a wall, it's probably just going to be a flat surface. You probably don't even have to worry about this. But for me, I'm just going to use the object input and put it into the vector of the brick texture. Okay, so don't worry too much about the rest of that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come here to the scale. So let's make the scale something like two for now. Okay, and it's still not looking like tile. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down here to the brick width and height. So now you can see if I mess around with the, the brick width, it's making them wider. If I make the row height higher, it's making them longer like that. So you can assume to yourself, if I made both of these, for example, a value of one, it'll be a perfect square. Now, I don't wanna come in here every time and individually edit these. So what you can do is you can go Shift A, you can click on search and type in value and get yourself a simple value slider, place it here and then take this value input and put it, or output and put it into the inputs of these two over here. So now all you have to deal with is one value slider and you'll have that equal um, like square that we're looking for for a tile. That being said, you do get non-square tiles. So um, I prefer to work with squares, so that's why we're doing this. So um, you can set this to whatever scale you want. Let's go with something like 0.3. Okay, so we're gonna go with 0.3. And let's just set the scale up here to three. This is at default. So now you can see this is what we have. 
Now at the moment it's not looking quite like tile still. You can see here the mortar line here is too thick or the grout line if you're dealing with tiles. So what we're going to do here is we're going to come to the scale or the mortar size. So under the scale we have the mortar size. And if we make this 0 0.003 we can see we've made it much thinner. So at the moment, you know, it depends on the kind of tile, but you can see now that that grout line in between tiles is a lot less. So let's make it something like 0 0.007 and see what that looks like. So I feel like 0 0.007 works for this sort of scale, but once again, it's something that you can edit and mess around with. So now that we have the actual tiles established and you know how it works, um, I'm gonna explain these three colors. Now these three colors here are simple. We have color one and two, that's essentially the kind of like two colors it's using to kind of mix and distribute randomly across the tiles. So you can see it's either a white tile or a gray tile or a little bit of something in between across the grayscale. And um, then you can see here the mortar is simply just black and that's the mortar color. Now you could come here and adjust these colors, but I'm not gonna do it that way. I'm gonna show you how to use this we have some color ramps and it gives us a bit more control. So now if we go shift A and we click on search, we're gonna type in color and we're gonna get ourselves a color ramp node. Now we're gonna place a color ramp node on this cable here. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the black here, which is gonna be our darkest value here. It's just a mortar. And I'm gonna make that slightly less on the value, a little bit lighter and make it really blue. So it's kind of like a dark blue. I don't wanna go completely black. Then I'm gonna take the lightest value here and I'm gonna click on this color bar and I'm gonna make mine kind of like a aqua blue like that. I kind of like that. And then I'm gonna click the plus button here one more time to add in another little tab here. And I'm gonna click on that color tab. I'm gonna click on a color bar. And this one, I'm gonna make something a little bit more oceanic, something like that. So this is kind of my color pattern, my color scheme for this. So you can see um, we have the light blue here and then we have the darker blue here and everything in between. We have to kind of this nice gradient here, which we can control and um, messing around with that can give you all sorts of different effects. But I'm just gonna leave it at that. Now, what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna make this grout line too high. So keep that really, really low. Okay, so that's your mortar or your grout, whatever you wanna call it. So if that's done, now we have a tile. So you could come over here now to your principal shader now we have this nice texture established and bring your roughness amount down to make a glossy tile. Um, I would recommend not making it fully glossy. It's just too glossy. Um, go with something like 0 0.15, 0.12. I think it's okay for this sort of thing. Now it still doesn't look like tile. It just kind of looks like plastic liner because it doesn't have any texture to it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and define that grout line with some displacement. So we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna click Search. And we're going to type in color. We're going to get another color ramp. And this time we're going to take the color output from our brick texture, plug it into the color ramp. And let's actually move it down here. And then we're going to go Shift A, search, type in bump. Actually, we're not going to need a bump just yet. Let's just actually put it back up here. We're going to take the color output from this ramp and plug it into displacement. And now you can see we have this displacement, especially on the grout line. You can kind of see how it's displacing. It does make a difference. But at the moment, it's kind of pushing out and we want it to go inwards. So we're gonna use a math node. So we're gonna type in shift A search and let's type in math. Click on the math node and let's place it on top of this cable here. So now this color ramp is feeding into this here. Let's just change that to a multiply. And now if we take this 0.5 value and make it point negative five, it's now in a negative, or you can just drag it down. So just drag it down to around point negative five or point negative six. And now you can see the, the um, grout line or the mortar line, if you will, is inverted inwards, it's into the negatives. And you can see what a difference it makes. If I zoom in here, you can see we now kind of have this like, the light is getting caught on the edges of the tile here and it makes it kind of pop out a little bit more. But still, these tiles just look a little bit too perfect. They don't have that roughness with the different glazing. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how to use a noise texture to make that look more realistic. So let's go Shift A, search, and just get a simple noise texture. So type in noise and get a noise texture. And let's just take the object a texture coordinate and just take the object output and put it into the vector of the noise texture here just to save on nodes so we don't have to get an extra node. And let's now go Shift A, search, and just type in color, get a color ramp. And let's just plug the color into the factor here of the color ramp. And let's take the scale for now and just make it something like 70. Okay, so now we have this here. 
And if we go Shift A and we click Search and we get ourselves a bump node, so type in bump, get the bump node. We can take the normal output of that bump and plug it into the normal of our principled. And now we can take this black and white information from our color ramp and plug it into the height. And now we got some um, bump happening here. You can see that, but it's too much. So let's come to the strength and make it 0 0.04. And now you can see we have that kind of roughness to this and that looks pretty cool. And that's how you make really simple tiles. So um, I'm just going to bring this window down and I might just add it to this part here. But you can see that's, that's how I did it. So these tiles look kind of realistic. Um, I think they might need a little bit more glossiness. I'm just gonna take that roughness and bring it down just a little bit there. So there you have super simple tiles. And all you have to do now, if you wanna control things, all you have to do is come here to this value slider and you can change the scale at any time. And you can also come here to your bump or the strength here on the bump and you can mess around with that as well. And also the scale of that noise as well. So that is a very simple tile material. I'm just gonna quickly render and see what that looks like. And there we have it. That is the final rendered tiles and they look pretty good. I hope you guys are able to use these tiles in a project. It's probably gonna be something like a bathroom or a kitchen, something more with architecture or interior. But if you do um, find it useful, definitely um, um, make some more of these materials. And you know, I encourage procedural workflows if you're into that sort of thing. And um, I will be making this material available on my Patreon. So you can check that in the description below. And if you wanna learn some other things that are not related to materials, like characters and things, you can go check out my channel. I got a lot of really cool free content on there for you guys um, to teach all sorts of things related to Blender and 3D graphics. I'll see you guys next time. And thank you for watching.